Today on Ham Radio Q&A, we're going to do some FT8 with the Yaesu FT891 and the Signalink uh, USB audio interface. Want to learn more? Well, keep watching and I'll show you how. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, part of my strategy for my recent ARRL field day participation was to run digital with my Yesu FT891. The plan was to operate FT8 and also decode the ARRL bulletin and potentially send some radiograms via Winlink. Well, unfortunately, I had issues with Winlink, so that will be the subject for another video, but I was able to successfully receive the bulletin and make a few FT8 contacts. While many newer transceivers have a built-in sound card that makes configuration for digital modes a lot easier, the FT891 does not have a built-in sound card, so you're either going to need to use patch cables to move the audio between the computer and the transceiver, or use an audio interface like my Signalink uh, USB interface. My preference is to use the Signalink as it has two definitive advantages over the patch cable route. First is that it provides audio isolation so you don't end up with any hum or ground loops. And the second is that the system sounds won't bleed into your operation as they'll be routed through the computer's audio device. With that said, getting everything to work for digital on the FT891 isn't a straightforward process, and I received a few questions like this one on how to set things up. I just got a Signalink myself. Do you have a video where you describe your Signalink setup? Well, in this video, we will do three things. Set up the Yesu FT891 for CAT or computer control, adjust the digital mode settings in the transceiver, and configure WSJTX for FT8. We're going to focus on WSJTX, but really, once you get it, you know, the digital setup and running, it shouldn't, you should be able to take that knowledge and do the same with other programs like FL Digity or um, Ham Radio Deluxe. So to begin, uh, we'll need the following. A Signalink audio interface with the USB cable and uh, the six pin data cable. The Signalink will need to be jumpered for the FT891. You can do that yourself or purchase the Signalink uh, jumper kit for the radio. And finally, you're gonna need a second USB cable for the CAT control. Technically, you know, you don't need the CAT control as you can run the Signalink using the radio setup in Vox. But, you know, when the CAT is enabled, you'll also have the ability to change bands and modes automatically from the program, which is a lot easier than manually um, fiddling around and changing those settings. So let's begin. First, uh, you're going to need to install the USB, a Yesu USB driver. So go to the Yesu website, navigate to the FT891 page, and click on the Files tab. And you're going to be looking for the USB driver, and it's towards the bottom of the page labeled FT891 SCU-17 USB driver, virtual COM port driver. Download this file. Now, this is the important part. Make sure the radio is not connected to the computer when you install the driver file. Unplug any USB cable running to the radio and then install the driver. Once the driver is installed, turn on the radio and plug it into the computer. Windows will complete the driver installation. You'll know that the installation is a success if you go into your Windows device manager and under ports, COM and LPT, you'll see two COM ports. They could be labeled COM3 and COM4 or they could be you know, any other two sequential numbers but you know, they're going to be in order. The first or the lower numbered COM port is the enhanced COM port and the second one is the standard COM port. The standard COM port handles rig control and the enhanced port is the push to talk uh, signaling. If the installation didn't work or you didn't get two COM ports then disconnect everything, restart the computer and try again. Moving on to the second step, once you've got the driver installed, we need to adjust some settings in the radio. So uh, go over to your FT891 and give the function or F button a long press. This takes you into the settings menu. And we're gonna, we're gonna uh, start at the first menu setting and then kind of scroll through, pausing at the spots where you're gonna need to change or adjust settings. 
I've got all these settings and uh, the corresponding menu numbers in the, uh, down in the video description below. So if you want to refer to that, uh, go ahead. But first, we need to set the baud rate for the CAT control. Menu 5-6 is CAT rate. And that's where you can set it to um, 34, uh, 38,400 bits per second. Now, actually, you can use any baud rate as long as it's the same value in WSJT or the, your other programs. But you know, we're going to use the fastest speed available. Next is menu 5-7, CAT TOT, or timeout timer. Set this to 100 or to 1,000 milliseconds. Menu 5.8 is CAT RTS. That's request to send, and set it to disable. Scrolling along, menu 8-1 is data mode. Set that to PSK. Menu 8-9 is data in select. Options are mic or rear, and we're going to use the rear port with the signal link. Menu 8-10 is data push to talk select. Set that to D-A-K-Y. Menu 8-11 is data out level. This should be set to 50. Menu 8-12 is data BFO. Your options are lower sideband or upper sideband. Choose USB for upper sideband. Finally, scrolling all the way through the menu to 16-03, turn your HF power down to uh, 20 or 40 watts. FT8 is a full duty cycle mode and prolonged use can be really hard on your transceiver and antenna. Plus, you know, really, you don't need to run full power. You can choose to disagree with me on this, but if you like. But my recommendation for the FT891 and a portable antenna system is to keep your power under 40 watts. Once we have the radio settings in place, we can make the final configuration in WSJTX. If you haven't used WSJTX for a while or have an old version, you know, make sure you, had, you, you download the latest update from the website. There was a bug that was introduced in version 2.2.0 that broke the FT891 control. So the latest version is 2.2.2 and that bug's been fixed. So if you're using 2.2.2 or later, you should be fine. There are two screens on the settings menu that you're gonna need to adjust. Under the file, select settings, and then go to the audio tab. Now, if you haven't, if you haven't done so yet, plug in the signal link into the computer and turn it on. The signal link receives its power over USB, so no additional power cable is required. The signal link uses a universal driver, so no additional installation is also required. On the audio tab, you will see that WSJ, WSJTX defaults to the standard audio device in your computer. You'll want to change both the speaker and the microphone to USB audio codec device, which is the signal link. Once you press OK, you should start receiving audio and decoding signals. Next up is the radio control. Now this gets a little more complex, but if your Yaesu drivers are installed properly, everything should work. For the rig, select Yaesu FT891. The pole inter interval is how often the computer checks the rig. So you can leave that set to one second, that's fine. Next is the serial port for CAT control. Now, as I said, Yaesu drivers have two serial ports, the standard port for CAT control and the enhanced port for push to talk. The standard port is always the higher of the two COM ports. So select the higher COM port for CAT control. Baud rate should match you know, what we have set in the radio, which is gonna be a 38,400 bits per second. The data bits, stop bits, and handshake need to be set to eight, two, and none. Next up is push to talk method. That toggles your push to talk. It should be you know, set to cat. You can also use Vox and let the signal link handle things, but cat control method is much, speed, is much cleaner. I always get a little stuck on this um, item in the menu. So uh, what I find that works best for me is that, um, because that port field is grayed out and it needs to be set to COM3 or the lower of your two numbers. I found that um, if I click on RTS, then the port field activates and I can change that menu item from USB to COM3. Then when I switch the item back to CAT control, um, it'll gray out, but stay at COM3 and everything is good. Transmit audio source can be rear data, but really, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, because you're using the signal link to begin with. 
uh, mode will be data packet. And you, you can select upper sideband, but you know, setting your radio to data packet means that you can configure all of the digital settings in the, uh, for the data modes in the FT891. And that's what we did previously here. Um, and then it's gonna remember all those settings so that when you, you toggle between data and um, single sideband mode, you know, you're not gonna have to reconfigure everything in your transceiver. Finally, there's split operation. You can leave it set to none or change it to fake it. I, I need to talk a little bit about split operation as this is a really interesting feature. In WSJT, when split operation is enabled, it will adjust the radio's frequency on transmit to give you the best audio quality. And now remember, FT8 signals fill up the entire upper sideband passband, so multiple users can have conversations. But the transceivers are optimized to give you know, the best audio quality in their mid-range. Audio in the low or the high part of the spectrum may be distorted or clipped. Running split will slightly adjust your transmit frequency so the transceiver can transmit using its mid-range audio tones. But to the listener on the other end, it's gonna sound normal because that transmit frequency had shifted. It sounds complicated, but really it's just a neat little audio trick to boost performance. All right, everything's set, good. Now, press the test cat button. It will turn green now when the program is communicating with the radio. If it doesn't or it turns red, then you have a communication issue to fix. Usually it's the port or the baud rate, but in the worst case scenario, it could be the driver. If you think everything is set correctly, then you know, restart the computer and try again. This always refreshes things, you know, especially if the computer went to sleep prior to you operating WSJT. Now that we have everything set up on our radio and a computer, and we can try making a couple contacts. any questions about configuring uh, the ASU FT891 for digital operation with the signal link interface? We'll leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what I missed, so please share your advice too. I'll follow up the conversation and we might even pull out uh, some of the, the best ones for your next year questions answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpull-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. And also check out you know, some of the recommended videos alongside here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know, pressing subscribe is your best way to be notified when a new video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, keep it on VBR. Have a great day and 73.